Hi, I'm Rasmus Bort, data scientist and Bayesian enthusiast. And um, if you want to get started with this Bayesian statistics thing, I really recommend you check out my data camp course, Fundamentals of Bayesian Data Analysis in R. The first part is completely free. You just need to go to datacamp.com and search for Bayes and uh, you'll find it. Uh, or just click the link in the description of this video. The course mixes videos of me talking with interactive coding exercises in R. So you can try things out for yourself. I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, here's the first video from the course so you know what you're getting into. Bye for now. Hi, and welcome to this course on the fundamentals of Bayesian data analysis using R. And here's me, Rasmus Båt, data scientist and Bayesian enthusiast. I'll be your guide on your journey through this course. Let's get started. In 1941, the British made a breakthrough in the war against Nazi Germany. During the beginning of the war, the German forces had been using a purpose-built typewriter, the Enigma machine, to decrypt military communication. But in 1941, a British team spearheaded by computer scientist Alan Turing finally designed a method that could decrypt German communication and needless to say this gave the Allied powers a huge advantage in the war. The reason I start out a course on Bayesian data analysis with a story from the Second World War is that a key to Alan Turing's success in cracking the Enigma code was his use of Bayesian methods. At the time, Bayesian methods were not widely used, but nowadays they are used in everything from A-B testing and statistical modeling to machine learning and robotics. In a nutshell, what is Bayesian inference? Bayesian inference is a method for figuring out unknown or unobservable quantities given known facts. There are other inference methods for this, but what makes Bayesian inference Bayesian is that it uses probability to describe the uncertainty over what the values of these unknown quantities could be. In the case of the Enigma machine, the unknown quantity Alan Turing wanted to figure out was the configuration of these three wheels. The person encrypting the message selected these wheels from a pool of eight different wheels and their position defined how messages were encrypted. But if you're not the person who encrypted the message, you don't know which wheels were used and what positions they had. The British had a working model for how specific wheel settings produced encrypted messages, but really wanted to figure out the opposite. Given these secret messages, what was likely the settings of the wheels that produced them? Alan Turing's solution was to use Bayesian inference to work backwards from the encrypted messages to arrive at the probable settings of the wheels. Bayesian data analysis is then the use of Bayesian inference to learn from data, the known facts, and the unknown quantities we want to learn about are the values of parameters or what future data might look like. Bayesian data analysis is a broadly useful approach and there are Bayesian versions of common statistical procedures such as hypothesis testing and linear regression. But the real power of Bayesian data analysis is its flexibility and that it allows you to construct problem-specific models that can make the best use of your data. In this first chapter of the course, you'll get to do some Bayesian data analysis yourself. You'll get to run a small Bayesian analysis from start to finish, but we'll go light on the theory. We'll save that for chapter 2, 3 and 4, where we will get to the bottom of how Bayesian inference really works, look at some reasons for why you would want to use Bayesian data analysis, and learn what Bayes' theorem is all about. While this course is mostly focused on theory, the last chapter will also introduce you to some practical tools for Bayesian data analysis that you can start using today. Now, to be clear, in this course you won't learn how to crack secret Nazi messages, but you will learn the fundamental ideas behind Bayesian inference and how the framework of Bayesian data analysis can be used to make sense of your data. 
So, that was the first video of the course. If you actually were doing this course on DataCamp, you would now get thrown into an exercise instead of having to see me again. I'll actually now show you the second video in the course, but I really recommend you start doing the course on DataCamp instead, so that you won't miss out on the exercises. Just go to datacamp.com and search for BASE, or click the link in the description of this video. But if you're not ready to do that just yet, Here's the second video in the course. At the end of this video, we are going to do some actual Bayesian data analysis. But first, we need a little bit of background. Bayesian data analysis is named after Thomas Bayes, who in the middle of the 18th century wrote the first article describing what we today would call Bayesian inference. But the term Bayesian inference doesn't really give you any clue to what it is. And a better term would be probabilistic inference, because that's what you do when you do Bayesian data analysis. It's really just about using the full power of probability theory to draw conclusions and learn from your data. Confusingly, the term probability can be defined in different ways. All definitions agree on the basic rules of probability and that it's a number between 0 and 1, but they don't agree on what probabilities stand for. The definition we are going to use here is that a probability is a statement about the certainty or uncertainty of different outcomes, where a probability of 1 means complete certainty that something is the case or is going to happen, and 0 means complete certainty that this something is not the case or that it is not going to happen. This definition is very similar to the common sense use of probability. Like you might say, I'm 99% sure it's going to rain tomorrow, which means you're very certain. Or you might say it's a 50-50 chance it's going to rain, which means you're very uncertain. It could go either way. Probability does not only have to be about yes-no type of events, but it can also be used to describe uncertainty over continuous quantities. For example, here is a graph showing the probability over how many inches it will rain next week. Each bar shows the probability for the corresponding outcome, and together the probabilities sum to 1. This graph here is also an example of a probability distribution which is just an allocation of probability over many mutually exclusive outcomes. So, the role of probability distributions in Bayesian data analysis is to represent uncertainty, and the role of Bayesian inference is to update these probability distributions to reflect what has been learned from data. <sighs> yeah, all this sounds a bit abstract. Let's try running a simple Bayesian model and actually see how it looks. Let's look at a Bayesian model for an underlying proportion of success. What is success here? Well, it could be curing a patient, getting a click on an ad, getting tails from when flipping a coin, etc. It depends on what data you have. And what we're often interested in is what the underlying proportion of success is, like what proportion of patients would get cured by this drug, say. I've implemented a Bayesian model in R that estimates this, and I've given it the name prop model. Prop model takes data as its first argument and assumes that the data is a vector of successes and failures represented by ones and zeros that there is an unknown underlying proportion of success, and whether a data point is a success or not is only affected by this proportion. And prior to seeing any data, any underlying proportion of success is equally likely. The result of prop model is a probability distribution that represents what the model knows about the underlying proportion of success after having observed the data. Let's start by seeing what happens when we run the model with no data. Huh. We get a big blue square. The x-axis in this graph shows different values for the proportion of success, and the y-axis shows the probabilities of the different values. The blue square is a uniform 
probability distribution, saying that any proportion of success has equal probability. It's labeled prior because one assumption of the model was that prior to seeing any data, any underlying proportion of success was equally likely. Now, let's add a data point. Let's say this is from an experiment on whether patients got cured by a new drug. Unfortunately, the first patient didn't get cured, marked red here for failure. The model now knows that a high proportion of success is improbable because if it would have been high, we should have cured this first patient too. The second patient got cured. Now the model knows that the proportion of success is improbable to be close to zero or close to one. The next three patients didn't get cured and for each failure it becomes more and more probable that the underlying proportion of success is low. A final cured patient and what we know at the end of the experiment after six data points is that the underlying proportion of success is probably around 0.4. But with this little data there is a large uncertainty and it could be as low as 0.10 or as high as 0.75. That was a quick little example of a simple Bayesian model. Now, prop model isn't part of any R package, I just made it myself, but at the end of this course you will know enough to implement it yourself too. But first it's your turn to try out prop model in a couple of exercises. Okay, so that was all I had here, but if you want to try out the model and do the rest of the course, just head over to datacamp.com and you find the course if you search for BASE, or just click the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the course. Bye.